Hey guys, so we're back with Margot Ciccarelli again. She just got her black belt. She just won the Pan Ams. I don't know what else she did, but it was <laughs> a lot going on. Uh, so we're here at Ryan Hall's. So we've been training for the week. So Margot's gonna show some new lapel stuff using the shin on shin, some cool ways to take the back and a lot of modern stuff. So I hope you guys like it. Boom. Hey guys, so I'm gonna show you some different ways that we can use the lapel, starting with the shin on shin one. Okay, so let's get straight into it. So. We're gonna go start directly from this position where my partner is in sort of this combat-based position with one knee up, okay? So the standard shin on shin one that we're going to look at is usually when I have a lapel lasso on this side, or simply I can dangle my foot by his hip line and connect the lapel through, feeding it through to the near side leg. From here, I always ensure that I have the far side collar grip here and I can lean back into this position. So when I have my left foot in the shin on shin position connected to John's leg. I ensure that his knee is loaded above my hip line. If it is behind my hip line, this is where we want to advance to, but usually in order for me to move his weight efficiently, I must load him first, okay? Our intention in this move is to get his knee to the mat here. Because right now, although he's very light, it's easy for me to keep him mobile in this position, I want to push it back and to the inside space. Now, if you take a look at my left hand grip also, I'm actively pulling into the side of his leg. I'm trying to keep both of his knees nice and squashed in this position. Again, I'm restricting his mobility in this position. So if John tried to move around, it's pretty difficult in this position. Now, from this position, we're going to progress with my right hand going underneath of my leg with a hands-up grip, and I feed the lapel to my other hand. So again, from here, if you just take a look at the swinging motion that I'm able to do from here, we can totally see how much back exposure there is of John's back in this position. We have a few different options available from here. Usually, I can go for the arm attack here, or I can try and get a deep delta heaver with this foot in order to finish the back tick. So if we just walk through that option number one, going for the arm bar, I'm gonna use the sole of my left foot on the middle of his back. I'm going to cup in front of the near side arm. My shin is gonna go across his neck, and we're gonna finish the arm bar just like this. So once I'm here, I can finish the armbar from this position. I release the lapel. I can either finish from here. If he flips over, he rolls through, and I can simply finish from here or take my leg above his head. So again, fast holding back into both knees down position. Our second option here, I can swing this leg all the way to the far side hip from here. Again, this emulates a lot of different back attack positions. I have control of his far side hip. When I'm ready, I feel it's appropriate for me to come up. I can release the lapel and try and come up for my back attack position and obtain the seat belt. So from the De La Hiva position, I'm going to feed my hand underneath my leg and receive the lapel from here, like so. My right hand stays on the cross collar grip and I'm gonna weave my foot onto the material here like so. So I'm stepping into the material. So what we can do from here, my foot can emulate like a K guard foot hook on the hip. So the next thing I must do is bring my knee to the inside space like so. So I can adjust my hip positioning that my knee is coming to the outside space. And my outside leg here just acts as a frame to try and support John's weight if he's trying to push into me or try to fill the space like so. We have a couple of different options we can do from here. Like if I hip escape my left hip into the inside space, it's very easy to elevate him. If I take my foot out, I can also keep the lapel like so. It's very easy for me to keep his leg elevated, grabbing the hip. If I expand my base to the backside, I can easily drive him over from this position. If we're coming back, other options we do have from this sort of position, we just go back to the Del Hero. It's very easy for me to use this as a fake reverse Del Worm. Often when we're playing the reverse Del Worm position, whether with the near side lapel or far side lapel, Often our partner is always trying to stuff our foot very proactively. We don't even need to have a foot for this position. So if I'm playing off of this position and I use my far side leg to hook on John's body, if I alter my hip positioning to obtain the same sort of reverse De La Worm grip, you can see that it acts like a fake reverse De La Worm. I can simply swing through and my, my leg is free 
to come to the backspace for any sort of matrix, crab ride variations. I can come up and finish with any sort of pass that you like. All right, guys, so that was a lot of modern lapel stuff. Uh, also, if you saw the video with Jake McKenzie that I did, I think these lapel systems actually mix really well with half guard stuff as well, or at least like the entry half guard position with like the single leg grip. And it makes it, like I can tell you, like as a top passer, I have to treat these systems very differently. So it's very hard for me to keep track of when I'm passing, whether or not the person is like fed it to the ringworm position or to the single leg position. Uh, and also if you guys are more of a, uh, a newer person to jujitsu and some of this stuff is more advanced, I try to mix up the content. But even if you feel like this stuff is too over your head to be able to use immediately in competition, it's really important that you still watch this kind of stuff because it makes you understand deeper the framework, right? And there's so many different styles in jujitsu that even if there's like things like, like since I've been here at Ryan's, I've been trying to understand heel hooks well, even though it doesn't necessarily apply to my gi game, which is like my career, sometimes understanding basic mechanics from something that doesn't seem to relate necessarily to what you currently do actually unlocks a lot of things in your head. And then it actually leads you to playing new games as well. Right. So like learning this stuff for me, like always massively helps me and keeps my mind like thinking about jujitsu differently. All right, guys, if you like the content, as always, like, share, subscribe, and also check out Margo on uh, Instagram at the Nomadic Mars. Nomadic Mars on Instagram. All right, guys. Thanks a lot.